As you're sitting there right now, thousands of molecules are hard at work in the backs of your eyes doing this, flipping around. And these molecules have one thing in common with the latest tech that's in your pocket. They're usually made from carbon. Whether it be the photochemistry in our eyes or the organic LEDs on our phones, the world we see is shaped by carbon. So it may come as no surprise to you when I tell you that all of our, uh, a lot of our knowledge of carbon chemistry and how these molecules interact with light is already familiar territory to chemists. Now, as a chemist myself, I'm really interested in how atoms are bonded together to make molecules. So when we look at carbon and nitrogen on the top row of that periodic table, we can see that they make nice, stable double bonds, which occur in nature and have been around ages ago. This phenomenon, double bond formation, so trivial in carbon, has taken chemists until 1981 to replicate in phosphorus, an element in the, just in the next row down. So phosphorus bonds really differently, and that's really cool. But as a physical chemist, I'm also really interested in how these molecules then interact with light. So if we look at carbon again, I gave you the example of the molecules that flip around like this in the back of your eye that you see. Well, since these molecules have been around for so long, chemists already understand how and why they do that. But because the phosphorus molecules that I study are relatively new, and they also do a whole host of different things with light, including splitting apart and also swapping bits with each other once they have, I look at this as new, unexplored territory for, for me to uncover. So whether it be bonding or interaction with light, as soon as we step into that lower portion of the periodic table, a lot of the properties of these chemicals start to change. And so I look at my role in this PhD as that of a periodic table explorer, looking at how the properties of molecules change as they begin to incorporate these heavier main group elements, starting with phosphorus. However, I do my exploration not with a ship or a compass, but with the ultra-fast lasers at the photon factory. These lasers, the first of which pumps our sample, and then the second of which I use to probe it, strobing the sample, causing Raman scattering to occur. Because our lasers are so short, we can piece the Raman scattering together to create a picture of how the molecule evolves after it has been stimulated by light. My name is Andy Wang. I use laser light to shed light on phosphorus, the light bringer. Thank you all for listening.